Today on Hopped Up Beer Review, we're going to be reviewing Hooter Brown by Oyster City out of Apalachicola, Florida. Thanks for joining us. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hopped Up Beer Review. The show where we give your professional somewhat biased opinion about the beer we're drinking and reviewing, and we make sure that Jay and Andy in the attic are awake. I've got <laughs> Jay, I've got Andy in the attic. I'm Ben. What are we drinking today? We're gonna have the Oyster City Hooter Brown. So it says Hooter Brown somewhere there. Uh, unlike right. Ben's label down there, it just says Oyster City. There's no Hooter Brown. Uh you're always so critical. You're always critical of my images I found on the internet. Always. Do, do, do. Always so critical. We were talking about this. We haven't had a lot of browns, right? So, you know, it's nice to have another brown. I think it's fitting that we have the, the Cooter Brown and the Hooter Brown, huh? Yeah. Ah, look at that. It's so pretty in the glass. Mm -hmm. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Hmm. Mm, is right. Well, that is an intense brown. If brown had a flavor, that's what I imagine brown would taste like. Yeah. And it's eight and a half percent, an imperial brown ale at that. Why don't you enlighten us, Andy? I'm, I'm working on it. There's lots of lights going on right now. I will enlighten. The it uses locally harvested Tupelo honey, and it's <laughs> locally harvested. <laughs> sorry for the intrusion. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we discussed off camera or prior to starting our recording about where this is actually brewed and canned because their website everything about it says Apalachicola Florida that's Florida Panhandle however the can says brewed and canned by made by the water LLC New Orleans Louisiana so if it's locally you know we're, we're going to go according to the Apalachicola um, lore where the it was founded. I will point out too the can still has coordinates on there. Mm -hmm. So I did not check those coordinates, but I would be willing to suspect they're different than New Orleans. <clears throat> I'll punch them in and show a map here. Yeah. Maybe maybe here <laughs> maybe you won't well when i say locally harvested tupelo honey it it's important or you know it's relevant to the location of the tupelo honey it's harvested up river at owl creek and owl creek is around apalachicola just north of there and that you know therefore that's probably why they call it hooter brown ale so the owls hooter Okay. And they also use uh, chocolate malts, which comes out in the flavor. So it's it's a rich yep. sweetness from the honey, and then you got that chocolate. It's a, it's very malty and sweet. We've heard of Tupelo honey a lot. Uh, do you know why they call it Tupelo honey versus the other honey that we had 
oh gosh with when we had wes on it was a different honey and <clears throat> well ben, ben does not understand Ben's, honey period yeah. Ben doesn't know the honey. Um, for those of us who missed out, we tried to send Ben a care package of honey for Christmas and it got rejected. So no thank you. Denied. Well, no, you. Tupelo honey comes from the Tupelo tree. Did not know there was a Tupelo tree, specifically the white Tupelo tree, which is primarily found in Georgia and Florida, not around New Orleans. So that's why I'm like this hmm. is important because the honey yeah, comes really from cool. the florida area it's found around rivers and swamps and uh ponds and wetlands <laughs> we lost jay yeah and there goes jay we'll be right yes. back yes all right jay is back so we are going to pick up where we left off uh andy back to you thank you well, Hooter Brown Ale won bronze at the Great American Beer Festival in 2021. That's enough about the beer. Oyster City Brewing Company, of originally founded Apalachicola, Florida. It's a regional brewery. It was conceived, they said conceived in 2012. They didn't say exactly when uh, it first opened. Well, okay, maybe I did. Yes, I do have those dates. So they conceived in 2012. I'll get to it later. At a local tap room in Apalachicola. And the they were talking talking about like what's your local beer? You know, what's what's the beer around the area that you go to that you're proud of? And they didn't have one. So they yeah, decided to make there's not their own. much there. Yeah. And they set up a homebrew system and through trial and error community feedback and research and visited regional breweries they uh they found a location they tur turned an old dive bar into a brewery founded in 2013 and um opened in 2014 they wow. also have locations in tallahassee and mobile and nothing on their website oh, yeah. um for oyster city mentions anything about new orleans so, yeah, I don't remember him being in Mobile either when I've been down there the last couple of times. That's I think it's interesting. A, might be a tap room, as a, yeah, uh, yeah, as opposed to a brewery. But even even then, most of the tap rooms I try to visit when I go to places like that. Mm -hmm. But it's been probably a couple of years since I've been in Mobile, and that is all I have. I'm quickly looking up Made by the Water LLC. Yeah, I know that um, I picked this up at when I was in Gulf Shores a little while back, and they're, they have a lot of options for Oyster City beer in that area. I don't know, Jay, you probably have it where you are, too. Uh, no? I don't see a lot of Oyster City. Um, yeah. You know, I wish I saw more of it. Uh, I always forget about it. Um, yeah. I, I yeah, I'd like to go down to their place in Apalachicola if it's still there. Uh, that's that's a neat area when you can get down <clears throat> Apalachicola. There's a there's a great place down there called uh, close to Apalachicola called the Indian Pass Raw Bar, and that might be the the area where this was even conceived. But it's a basically a raw bar. You go in and you order your food, and you have your own glass and you go up to the taps on the wall and you feel it's all on the honor system. When you get through, you tell them how many beers you've had. And Gosh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but when you get down further, you know, you're getting towards 30 a in that area that you've got 30 a brewing and, and several others. Um, I think there's one or two others down in that area. Um, and they have some nice, uh, tap rooms and brew pubs that are down there for those but yeah oyster city's one i've never been to always kind of wanted to go to and i always forget about it i don't know why maybe it's because some of their can art is just not as flashy or you know it, it, it's got yeah. the label but it's just a different color can typically <clears throat> yeah that are different it is i mean there's there's not much variation it's not going to reach out and grab you like some of the others that we do uh, right so yep well i found it Made by the Water LLC, 
It's an innovative family of regional craft breweries founded on the principles of local engagement, great beer, and assembly of inspirational people thirsty to make an impact. There you go. Seven tap rooms and six production breweries across five states. So they have Oyster City, Catawba Brewing Company, Palmetto mm -hmm. Brewing Company, okay. Falberg. Uh, Falberg? So based, Falberg. The, yeah, Falberg. Yeah, it's out of New yeah. Orleans. Yeah, um, it looks like, yeah, I've, it's got the, the yeah, Florida Leader. Yeah, I've had... Yeah, hey, we can't see it's white on your No, you can't. <laughs> but um yeah, well, Fallberg's the old Dixie. It, isn't it? yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. How about that? So that's interesting. I guess it's a conglomerate that's that's got all of these regional breweries together and mm -hmm. under one umbrella, uh, rather than having a macro. So that makes sense. Yeah. And they've kept kept a lot of it. Um uh, you know, they're it sounds like they're buying up the brand names out of them. And then they might be brewing them, for instance, like the cans that we have. They could have been brewed out of New Orleans, but they're, they still have their tap rooms and things like that in Apalachicola. Um, same things happened with like good people like we've talked about in Alabama or straight to ale. Uh, you know, they bought up a couple other breweries and latched them on. And really, they do a lot of their brewing in the larger production facilities, and they still maintain their tap rooms in their respective areas. All right. Has anybody had this one? And you, Ben. Yeah. So. Yeah, I have. Boo. <laughs> what say you, yeah. sir? I'll give you my two cents. It's good. It's, uh, you can definitely, it definitely tastes heavy. It tastes that eight and a half percent. And I think the honey makes it a little heavier too. Very chocolatey, more chocolate than I would expect after uh, out of a brown ale, and a, a very sweet, more sweet than I was expecting out of a brown ale. So that that heavy chocolatey sweetness, which in some beers works for me, but I would expect that more in a stout. The, the the brown ale, I uh, it's gonna kind of limit my score. It's still a good beer, and I'd have it again, but I'm gonna keep it at a seven and a half. I think I, I like my browns a little lighter, and yeah, a little a little less chocolatey and malty. I I, I think it's just too too much malt for me. Um, maybe it's the honey throwing in there too, but if you gave me another one, I would drink it at eight and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so, i'm not knocking it seven and a half is a great score still yeah i'll jump in there because i know ben provided these i appreciate it ben it's you reminded me of the the goodness behind this one i i think i've had it a few times but i've only uh logged it once and that was uh last fall i actually had it on draft when i was ironically down at orange beach at dinner one night um uh, and you didn't invite Ben. No, he wasn't there when I was in the fall. Yeah. We got we got together and over. You were at uh, Cosmos. I was. Yeah. Yeah. You're exactly right. Cosmos <laughs> Restaurant and Bar. Yeah. September hey, 15th, 2023. Uh, it's one of my favorite places to go eat down there. If you get a chance to visit, fantastic food. One of one don't, of the greatest. Don't worry, Andy. We had a great time right around <laughs> New Year's together, and I mean, you know, it was probably. Like at midnight? Great. Time. No, it was not. No, it was <laughs> close to midnight. It was like the 28th. Um, but we had a great time, and it was probably mostly because you weren't there. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, we got to, to be visit, honest on the show. Visit right? uh, a brewery that I hadn't been to in probably five years. So it was good. No, we missed you. Uh, yeah, we did miss you. And, and, and our fan, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll agree with you, Andy. I mean, this to me is almost like a stout or a pastry uh, dessert beer in a lot of ways. Uh, it's, you, the chocolate malts come through. It's very malty, very sweet, uh, very rich, full. Um, I do love the eight and a half and and the. I mean, it has tremendous flavor. Even the aftertaste, you still get that chocolate that lingers 
Um, you hit the nail on the head with where I was going to. I mean, my score is seven and a half. It's one of these you could have maybe one, maybe mm -hmm. two would be pushing it for a night because it's just so sweet and it's so full. Uh, it's a great beer to close out at the night with. Um, so, and, and I will say on draft, it's it's just as good, if not better. I mean, it's got that freshness. You can get that honey. You can get that uh, the chocolate malts come through even. I won't say even more, but the honey, I, I think, is a little more there. So, All right. And then there was one. Uh, so I grabbed this beer for one reason, and it's because um, I had talked to, in my line of work, I deal with vendors, and one of the vendors I dealt with uh, was a, a fellow Ole Miss graduate, uh, and he mentioned, you know, we got to talking about some – you know, things outside of work, if you will, and talked about our show. And he asked if, if I'd had this beer and I had, but we had not reviewed it. So I said, Hey, the next time, you know, I see it, I'll grab it and we'll review it. So I saw it and here we are. Um, yes. To me, the sweetness of this beer is the very first thing I noticed on the very first sip. I mean, it, you guys have, have said this, I'm going to reiterate it it hits you more like a stout and more like a, a dessert or pastry stout. Um, and I don't know that I'm, you know, it definitely wasn't what I was expecting from a Brown, you know, this Brown granted I've had it before, but, you know, looking at it more under, a, you know, a microscope than just picking up a beer and drinking it, which is one of the fun things about doing this show is we I tend to think about it a little bit more. Such as um, you do when you visit Angelina's pizzeria and pasta in July of 2021, <laughs> right? You just pick up and drink. Where is that place? I don't even know. Where, where, where's that located? You tell me, man. I've never heard of that place. Uh, Santa Rosa well, Beach, Florida. Yeah. Oh. It's down there on 30A. I know exactly where that is. Yes, I remember that now. <laughs> like it was, like it was yesterday saying, like when was you yesterday. were just at a restaurant but now that you are examining it closely well also i was on vacation so there's i can't tell you how many beers i'd already had that day uh so you it's know kind of like mine at cosmos i mean come on andy yeah. so yeah. your score might be a little different just because you weren't there andy doesn't mean that you know <laughs> i didn't have a good time so um <laughs> anyway uh yeah, it, it, it's it's sweet, it's thick, it's heavy. It, like like has been said, it drinks more like a stout than it does a brown. I, I think for that reason, now doing the review, I'm going to probably, I don't know if I'll knock it lower than, I don't even know what I rated it before, but it's going to come in a little bit lower for me because like you, Andy, I was really wanting that light brown, you know, taste and not so much of a heavy stout taste or a heavy pastry stout uh not the sweetness for sure so uh it's good i've got a couple more i'm excited to drink them but at the same time it's not exactly what i was looking for coming into it we'll give it a seven so so now you know what to expect when you drink it so you know you're like okay I feel like a stout today. <laughs> I feel like a chocolate stout. And yeah. pretty much there you go. Or a chocolate order. That's, or yeah, a dessert to finish the night. Yeah. And there you go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think a, a chocolate porter is probably the best description that you can give of this beer, in my opinion, because that's really how it drinks. Mm -hmm. um, so that is going to be a 7.3 for the Hooter Brown from Oyster City. Uh, definitely one that we've had fun with, I think, you know, discussing and, and uh, talking a little bit about how it kind of is false advertising, maybe a little bit in the sense that it <laughs> comes off as a brown, but it kind of tastes like something else. So uh, you guys jump in there and correct me if you disagree with that. But uh, I think that, um, you know, it, it's one that, that I'll look forward to having the others that I have and just expect something else going into it. Uh, definitely appreciate you guys checking out this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and cheers that notification bell so you can get notified of our videos in the future. Uh, come say hey in our Hopped Up Beer Review Discord server. It's a chat room. Um, unlike this beer necessarily, it is just a chat room. 
we're not going to advertise it as something it's not. Um, and then uh, also check us out on all social media links down below. And if you have any interest in any Hopped Up Beer Review merch, Hopped Up Beer Review merch. QJ. Then, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to write it. <laughs> then uh, you can check out the link below as well. For Andy in the Attica, Jay, I'm Ben. Cheers, mates. Cheers, Cheers mates. mates. Drop the ball. <laughs>